Thank you for joining us on the Wings of Healing podcast, where we are walking by faith. Follow us for devotions, Bible studies, and encouragement as we discuss topics relevant to life. Hello, everybody. Pastor Chuck Holsinger here with the Wings of Healing podcast, where we are walking by faith. Today, I want to talk about um, the heart of God, the heart of God. I think so many times um, we misjudge God's heart. We we don't really have an understanding, uh, oftentimes, of what it is that that he is about and, and his purpose, his will, his desires. And, and in that, when things happen that are contra- contrary to how we feel, it's easy to, to be, to misjudge the heart of God. So that's where I, I want to uh, talk about today is the heart of God. So, um, if you're not driving or, or you're able, you want to grab your Bibles, go ahead and grab your Bible, notepad, whatever it is. If you're just listening, that is fine as well. So, uh, but anyways, thank you for joining us and we'll be right back. You know, when, when things happen, um, that we don't understand when things don't go as planned, when, Doors close in our face, an unexpected illness uh, arise. You know, there there's a thousand thoughts that will often fill our mind, and and none of them are are usually good. We can start to question whether God cares, or even if He's aware of what's going on. Uh, we can question His love for us, and and even wonder why you know He's robbing us of you know, our happiness, our, our joy, you know? Um, so I can speak from experience that many times, uh, you know, I have misjudged the heart of God. And, and so I, I think it's important to understand, you know, what the Lord is all about. And in, in first John, uh, I believe it's four ten. So first John, I'm getting it here four and 10 says, herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. And, and, and when we think about, you know, his love for us, that, that, and John also writes in John three sixteen, and we know this scripture, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So here's John, the beloved disciple, wanted to make sure we knew what what he knew so well and and he knew that God loves us we have a whole bible a, a whole book of 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 uh, or a whole uh, you know 66 books of the bible that reveal his love for us all the way from genesis all the way to revelation god quietly reaches into his pockets and shows us his badge of security his badge of love Uh, From the Garden of Eden to the Garden of of Gethsemane, his love for us did not change. Um, However, you know, disheartening our our circumstances, um, no matter what our our situation is, no matter what we're going through, no matter what it is that we are facing today. And no doubt, you know, there are some of you that are listening to this, whether now or you have went through things or you will come go through things are facing some very tough situations. And, and, and I can, I can speak from experience and, and personal and also in walking through, you know, some of these dark, um, chapters in in many people's lives through the church and leadership and things like that, that, you know, uh, sometimes we walk through these, these, these dark gardens, these, these dark places. And however disheartening our circumstances are, you know, we need to understand and, and, and the heartbeat of God, what it is that God desires for us, what it is that he desires for his people, what it is that he desires, um, for the world. 
and, and, and all these things. And, and in order to really understand that, we, we have to understand that there's there's going to be times of, of, dis, uh, of discontentment. There's going to be times of struggle. There's going to be times because we live in a world that's full of sin. It, it, it's full of sin. So so this this world is is narrowing down. There's going to be a return of Christ. There's going to be, you know, things that are going to take place in in this world. But yet God still beyond that has a future for the body of Christ. He's got a future for the people of God. That you know we sing the old songs. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue and we sing it but i don't know if we really understand what that means we we want all the security and hope and peace you know in this world where it's just not going to happen in this life that this life is just temporal it's just it's just a a planning stage it's just a a a time to uh make eternal preparations with the lord for one of these days forever the bible says we will be with the Lord forever with the Lord. And he, he, he is our defender. Now he's our protector. He's our shield. He is our security. And, and no matter what we face, no matter what we go through, we're, we're going to experience, um, these things in life, but yet with God, we, we're, we're able to make it through these things. So don't, don't misjudge the heart of God. So what is it about, you know, the heart of God? Um, what, what what can we understand about the heart of God? And and I think that one of the scriptures that first came to my mind is in Acts chapter number thirteen and and verse number uh, twenty two. And, and we may read just a couple other verses down through there. Um, let's just start here. Um, in verse nineteen, uh, Acts thirteen nineteen. And we'll read a few verses here. Acts 13 and 19. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, Canaan he divided their land to, the, to them by lot. And after that, he gave unto them judges about the space of 450 years until Samuel the prophet. So he's kind of given a, a, a little history, a little history of the nation of Israel. Now, it's important to note that the people of Israel represent the, the people of God. And, and so we, we have been grafted in. So the church now spiritually ha, has, is also the people of God. But yet God still has that, that nation of Israel. That's why it's important to always pray for Israel, to keep your eyes upon Israel. But So he's kind of gone through their history. If you remember all the way back in... When Moses brought them up out of the land of Egypt, he, he began to form a, a nation, a country, a people together. And, and, and he had to go through then from Moses to Joshua. And, and then we get into the, the judges and how that, how, how that God uh, placed the, the, the judges there. And, and, and for 450 years, they would just kind of um, uh, judge the people. They would lead the people and then Samuel the prophet came along and anointed uh, King Saul, and they wanted a king. They, they people wanted to be like other nations. So the Lord, um, in verse twenty one, and afterward they desired a king, and gave unto them Saul the son of of Sis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of forty years, and and so Saul was their first king. He stood head and shoulders above everybody else, and. And, and it wasn't necessarily the Lord's will. I mean, he allowed it. It wasn't his desire, uh, but yet he, you know, <clears throat> let the people, you know, have. Sometimes the Lord will, will let us, you know, have what we want. He, he'll let us make that decision. He'll He'll let us, even though sometimes if, if, if you're anything like me, you've made decisions that, that are against the heart of God, that are against the heartbeat of God, but yet... You, you done it and God allowed it and and uh, it was proven that you know Saul as good of a man he was he looked like a king he walked like a king he, he stood head and shoulders above everybody else he was strong like a king but yet he did not have the heart of God he did not have the heart for the people of God 
And so after those 40 years, verse 22, Acts 13, 22, and when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. And, and so we learn something here about God. And this is kind of where I, I want to look at, not so much on the, the history of the nation of Israel or the, the kingship and things like that, even though we can learn an important lesson through that, that sometimes God will give you what you want. Uh, but sometimes what you want isn't what you need. And and so that's they found that out. They wanted this this kingly guy, this person that's going to lead them. And Saul ended up not doing, um, not leading them into the heart of God, not having the heart for the people of God. So then you have David, which, you know, probably uh, didn't look as, as much like a king like Saul does. Matter of fact, whenever uh, Samuel went to Jesse's house to anoint um the next king over Israel, uh, Jesse, Samuel, none of them thought David should even be there that day. So they didn't even invite him. And, and so it just, the whole story just kind of goes to show you at, that, you know, God oftentimes, we oftentimes look on the outside of what man should look like and what, what, what we are looking for and, and, and all this kind of stuff. But God looks up on the heart and God seen something in David long before anyone else seen anything in David, including uh, here, I think there's even proof of that, including his own family and his own father. Not to say he didn't love him, not to say he, he didn't. David was a great uh, shepherd. He, he was a great uh, keeper of the sheep. And, and I think uh, Jesse knew that, but uh, he, he didn't, when he looked at, at David, he, he, he thought, well, you know, surely it ain't going to be David. And, and so he brought all his older brothers. Uh, so don't, don't be, don't be so moved by what you see. Don't be so moved. Don't don't be so critical of what you see because sometimes we miss out on many things because we we go by what we see so much and 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 what's on the outside where oftentimes it, it's some of the most uh, great greatest workers of, of God. It doesn't have the pedigree that we think they should have. They may not always look like the way we think they should look. They, you know, they they may not have all the 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 uh, prestige and the the uh, uh, qualities that we think they ought to have. But sometimes just having someone with a heart for God and for heart for God's people. Uh, can can do much greater than than education or something like that. And again, nothing against education, nothing against no, none of that, but just understand it needs to be coupled with the heart of God. Um, so, what is the heart of God? The Bible said that he that God said that David was a man after God's own heart. The Message Bible says, "I've searched the land and found this David, son of Jesse." He's a man whose heart beats to my heart, a man who will do what I tell him. So I think there's a couple of things there. One, we we see here that he's a man whose heart beats to my heartbeat. In other words, there's a unison, there's a unity there with the heart of God, with the word of God. And, and I think that's always going to be the thing. If the church, and we'll do another message on the heartbeat of the church. But if we're ever, if we're truly going to be reflective of God, we're going to have to allow our heart to beat with his heart. We're going to have to put aside our agendas, our, what we want, what we think. You know, I, I tell this, this story all the time or not really a story, a statement that was made to me several years ago. And I was talking to, to a young man and he, he is, um, uh, felt like the Lord called him to be a pastor and, and this, that, and the other. And, uh, and, but then he made this statement to me. He said, but I'll never pastor a church less than a hundred people. And, and, and I thought, you know what? I, I don't know that you've got the heartbeat. I, I don't know that, I don't know that that's the heart of God. I, I, I just can't see where, you know, the Bible said he left the 99 and went after the one. And, and, and so kudos to those that are pastor and, you know, churches of hundred, 200, 300, 400 people. That's, that's wonderful. But, but also I, I, I don't think that we should 
look at a church or a group of people that's maybe smaller in number, maybe don't have as much money or, or something like that, may not be have have all the things that, that we think they ought to have and the buildings and things like that. I don't think we ought to look at them people any any less than we do uh, of a larger group of uh, or wealthier church. Um, so that man, as far as I know to this day, has never pastored a church, and 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 quite frankly, I'll just be honest with that uh, type of attitude. I I don't know that he ever will. You know, I I don't know that God will ever give him that opportunity, and I don't nor I don't know if he could even handle that. But that's just my opinion. Obviously, obedience is the way to touch the heart of God. We need to understand obedience is the way to touch the heart of God. And, and obedience will cause your heart to beat with his. He called David a man after his heart, a man whose heart beats in alignment with his heart. This has always been an amazing statement to me. I want you to think about it. David was a man of many mistakes. He was a man who messed up and uh, we, we can... We can say, yeah, but he didn't. He didn't have the Holy Ghost, he, you know, and all this stuff. And we can, uh, and and. But I'm gonna tell you, sometimes we push people to the side today because they've made a mistake or or something like that. And and these are sometimes the very people that I believe that God is wanting to use in this end time revival to be a great voice and a great light and a great witness. Um, we often push people to the side who struggle. We say, you know, hey, come to church and bring your struggles and bring your issues. But deep down, a lot of times we reject people in their struggle and their issues. That was not the heart of God. That was never the heart of God. I've heard it taught that David was a man after God's own heart because he worshiped him. And David was a worshiper. David truly was a worshiper, writing you know, the majority of the book of Psalms and the, all those songs and, and those prayers and, and all that. David was a worshiper and David was a praiser, but uh, I don't believe that's necessarily why David was a man after God's own heart. I've heard it say that David was a man after God's own heart because he wanted uh, to build uh, God a house and and, and, and while I think that was a wonderful thing, uh, up until that point, they, they, he basically, you know, the tabernacle was a temporary structure that would be moved from place to place, which worked, you know, when they were wandering in the wilderness and they were going to and fro and, and things like that. But once they settled in to the promised land, uh, it only made sense for, for God to have a, 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 a permanent structure where his presence would dwell. Remember, that's Old Testament. So, you know, today we can have the spirit of God and we are the church. And, and, and um, so we don't have to, you know, go to, go to a specific altar and offer up a sacrifice and go to the, the priests and, and, and do the things. But now in that day, they, they absolutely they absolutely had to do that because that was the will and the plan of God. That was the Old Testament, the old will of God. Uh, so I've heard they, it was because David was a worshiper. I've heard that it was because uh, he wanted to build God a house. I, I've heard many things. We could go back to where he fought Goliath, he, you know, and all this stuff where, where you know, David, you know, even at that young age, um, you know, Told, told Goliath, said, you come to me with spear and sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. So even from a very early age, David seemed to have, you know, this grasp of, um, of what it was to represent, you know, the Lord, what it was to have that, that heart for God. And, and I've heard many things and, and, and I believe that all those things contribute to the fact that, that that the Lord said that David was a man after my own heart, my own heart. But something that stands out to me and it stood out to several other writers that I in study in this was can be found in first Samuel chapter 24. And we see that God has told David that he would deliver his enemy into his hand. And David was free to do with him 
whatever he chose. And, and this was so after David, Saul was brought down and God was bringing Saul across David's path and Saul's future was in the hands of David. Most of us, and it was even customary back then and even throughout history, even up until even now we see it sometimes in, excuse me, my voice, sometimes in, um, you know, different countries and different uh, nations where, where, where there's a takeover, uh, a lot of times what they'll do is they will literally, uh, um, you know, put to death, you know, the, the old leaders and, and even their entire families. And, and it was definitely customary back then because they didn't, they didn't want any uprisings. Okay. Anyone that was going to be, you know, that was, you know, faithful to them to continue to, you know, uh, and, and do this kind of underground kind of, um, you know, re rebellious type attack on them. So, so they would have, they, they understood this idea that we have to take the head off. We got to cut the head off. And oftentimes you do that. Uh, those that are fall in line with that, it'll cause them to, um, to fall in line with, with the new leadership. So it was very customary in them days that whenever a, a kingdom would be, would take over another kingdom, that they would uh, they would put to death the the old leaders if they wasn't killed in battle, uh, but not only their leaders but even their family, and, and but when when it came time for this and there was a transition of power and there was an overthrow, that David uh, Saul was came uh, was put into David's path and Saul's future was in the hands of David. Most of us would love to hear God say, I, "I'm bringing your enemy before you," right? You know, we often sing songs today about our enemies falling and being drowned and, and, and all this stuff. Uh, I, most of us would love to say, I'm bringing your enemy before you. You can do whatever you want. Imagine if the Lord would say, you have my, those that have, have, uh, that have talked about you, those that have gossiped about, those that have drugged your uh, name through the mud and made fun of you and, and hurt you. And, you know, imagine if the Lord would say, all right, they're, they're yours. You can do with them whatever uh, whatever you want is entirely up to you. Most of us would probably take advantage of that opportunity and remove that enemy from our midst. But what did David do? When God brought David's enemy across his path, we're, now we're going to learn a little bit about the heart of God. David cut a piece of fabric off his skirt. I would imagine in pride saying, I, I could have taken you out at any moment, right? However, the Bible says that even that act caused David great remorse and he regretted it. So so even in this little act of, of you know, cutting this little piece of fabric off his off his skirt, he, he was he was even kind of making mockery here of, of, of Saul and say, telling Saul, you know, I could have cut you off. I, I just, I want you to know he, even David was flesh here a little bit, right? He, he had a little fleshly tendency and he said, I, I, I basically what he's saying is I, I want you to know what I could have done, but yet something grabbed a hold of David. There was something in the heart of David that even later on, he had great remorse and even regretted that little act that, that to some w wouldn't even be understood. Um, you know, uh, you know, today we, we might drag him through the mud on faith. We might, we might, we might put a, put it out there on social media and, 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 and proved everybody what they, what they said was wrong and, 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 and put the, put the shine the light on, on their false accusations and their deeds. And, 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 but that even David looked back at cutting that little piece of fabric off his skirt and regretted that we're going to learn something about the heart of God. David said in his heart that he could not touch God's anointed. That's where that touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. Now keep in mind the anointing had departed from Saul. Okay, Saul was no longer the anointed. The, the Bible says that the anointing was removed from Saul. Yet David knew he was once chosen by God, once anointed by God, and he refused to touch him. David having had an opportunity to take out the one person the enemy was using against him, but he refused, 
and he refused to take the opportunity given. God gave David an opportunity, and David took the high ground. He touched the heart of God, and God called him a man after his heart, a man whose heart beat the same as his. Remember that word alignment? That David's heart was aligned with the heart of God. Yeah, David struggled. Yeah, he had his issues. But David's heart was aligned with the heart of God. How many times could God have judged one of us, taken us out because we refused to obey his will, his way, yet he showed mercy and forgiveness and extended grace and love to us? Just as David did with Saul that day, his heart beat the same as God's heartbeat. I truly believe that is one of the main reasons why God said that I have found a man, that David was a man after my own heart. In thinking of this opportunity given, I think about the many times that, that you know, good Christian people will will be given an opportunity to talk about someone who who was once God's anointed. They they have the opportunity to destroy them with words. Do they take that opportunity or do they like David take the high the high ground? Sadly many feel like God has given them the opportunity and it is their duty to take them out. That is not the heart of God. God always extends mercy, forgiveness and love and thank God for that. So this has caused me to reevaluate times that are opportunities given to not see them as I once would have, but to see them as an opportunity to allow my heart to be as God's would, to allow my heart to be aligned with the heart of God, allow my heart to uh, allow myself to show mercy, love, and forgiveness. A time to be called a man or a woman after the heart of God. That's That should be our heart's cry. That should be what we desire, what we seek after. We, we should seek opportunity to show mercy, to show grace, to show love toward God. That, that you know, remembering that while we were yet sinners, that's what the Bible said, Christ died for the ungodly. And, and, and if he did that for me, and if he did that for you, he can certainly do that for those people in our lives and those people in our communities. So you want to have the heart, a uh, heart of God. You want your heart to be aligned with the, with the heart of God. Amen. Seek mercy, seek grace and seek forgiveness. And then once it's given to you and it's been given to us countless times, we should reflect that and give that to other people. So, uh, uh, today, I just want to end here today with just thinking about the heartbeat of God. Do Are you reflective? Is your life reflective of the heart of God? Is the church being reflective of the heart of God? Does our Is our heart aligned with the heart of God? The Bible said that he came to seek and to save that which is lost. What is our purpose today? What is our heart beating after? What is it that we are seeking after? What is it that we are are, are giving when, when, when we are rejected and we are hurt? Uh, are we misjudging the, you know, the heart of God when we go through hard circumstances and hard situations? Don't misjudge the heart of God. God, God's love is forever before us. He, he, he loves us with an unconditional love, and, and we should be reflecting that love in, in, this, in, this communi- in, in our communities and in our world today. Let's allow our heart to be aligned with the heart of God. May God bless you today. Thank you for joining me on the Wings of Healing podcast. We are glad you were able to join us today. Wings of Healing Worship Center is located in West Portsmouth near the beautiful Shawnee State Forest. We would love to have you join us for a service or a special event. Our services are streamed live on YouTube and Facebook, and more information can be found on our website. Thanks again for joining us, and we hope that you have a wonderful day.